If you have a Sony PlayStation 5, the latest system update 4.0 includes the ability to use the built-in M.2 SSD expansion inside the case. This video will cover how to install the SSD and how it works with the PS5. First up, there are requirements for the PS5 SSD upgrade. The SSDs must have a fast enough read and write speeds as specified by Sony. This list shows seven of the latest PCIe 4.0 SSDs that will work with the PS5. Some have built-in heat spreaders and some don't. It is recommended to add a heat spreader if the SSD doesn't come with one. Some of these items are out of stock at many retailers. The most common sizes I would recommend are the 1TB and 2TB models but they are expensive compared to the last generation of M.2 SSDs. I chose the Sabrent 2TB Rocket 4 Plus due to its speed ratings, a number of online reviews, the price, and availability. I picked the 2TB version since I have a large library of PS4 games and I want to keep a lot of them inside the PS5. 2 terabytes should give a nice amount of extra space for future games, especially as newer AAA games can easily reach over 100 gigabytes in size. I also purchased a Glowtrends M.2 heatsink. This is a relatively cheap one, and it fits the height requirements from Sony, which is less than 8.8 millimeters, including the combination of the SSD and single-sided heatsink. Here are the two packages that arrived from Amazon the Subrent M.2 SSD, and the Glowtrends heatsink. Let's see what's inside. Opening up the Subrent cardboard box reveals a nice metal box inside. Seriously, why such a nice metal case for something that will be tossed? I'd rather just have cardboard that's easily recyclable. Here is a close-up of the M.2 2TB SSD. Don't worry about removing any of the stickers since they are designed for heat dissipation already. Next up, I'll open the Glowtrends heatsink bag and see what's inside. On top is the black heatsink itself. The groove side faces up. Next, we have the silica gel pad with adhesive on both sides. Then we have wet and dry wipes to clean off the surface. This is a QR code that links to the video instruction. And on the back is an instruction sheet, but who reads those, right? There are two ways to secure the heatsink. They include metal clips and four silicone bands. Let's take the SSD and place it down here with the copper side facing up. I use the wet pad to clean the surface and it's using isopropyl alcohol. Then use the dry pad to finish up and make sure it's dry. Now let's install the gel pad. First, peel off the protective plastic off one side, which reveals the adhesive, and place it in the middle of the SSD. Press down and make sure that it is adhering securely. Here I am just test fitting the heatsink on top of the pad to see how it looks. I want to leave room for the screw hole on one end and the interface on the other side. Peel the protective plastic off the pad. Now I can place the heatsink in the center of the pad and press down firmly. And now you have a close-up of the heatsink on top of the thermal pad over the M.2 SSD. Notice that there is room on both sides of the SSD for the screw and for mounting the SSD into the M.2 connection. I chose to use the silicone bands since reviews for this product mention that the bands seem to be more effective than the metal clips. So, slide them over both ends of the SSD. Honestly, the adhesive alone on the pad is probably enough, but these bands add another layer of support. And I am now done with preparing the SSD so that it is ready to be used.
Make sure to update your PS5 to the version 4 of the operating system. If you don't, you will see this message. The PS5 will not work with the SSD in the slot without version 4. If you have already done so, please skip to the next chapter. In the main menu of the PS5, bring up the lower menu and scroll over to the download section. You can now see the system software update file has been downloaded and is now ready to install. I pressed the View Details button and that brings up a rather long list of changes in this version of the software. You can slow down this section if you want to read it. Now I'll scroll over and press the Update button. The system will restart and then begin the update process. Pretty soon after that, it is complete and the system restarts. There is also an update for the controllers, so you need to connect them to a USB cable and go through the update. Next, you will see a three-page tutorial on changes to the control center. Bringing up the lower menu again, scroll all the way over to the right and press the power button and select Turn Off PS5. Remove all the cables and place the PS5 in an area where you can work on it safely. If you have a PS5 with the base installed, you need to use a flathead screwdriver like this to remove it. Next, a Phillips head screwdriver is needed to remove the SSD cover, and a smaller Phillips head screwdriver may be needed since the SSD mounting screw is fairly small. I need to place the PS5 where it's easier to reach the bottom screw for the mount, unscrew it using the flathead screwdriver, and then put it aside. Orient the PS5 so that the right side is facing up. If you have the disc version, this is the panel that is removed. Press up on the left side of the panel, mostly in the lower and upper areas. Now just slide the panel off to the right and it easily unsnaps. I don't know why people use mallets or manhandle it, it shouldn't be that hard. Place the cover out of the way. I have zoomed into the area just below the cooling fan. This rectangular cover needs to be removed to access the SSD location. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, take out the screw. With the screw out, place it and the cover off to the side. Now I need to remove the very small SSD mount screw right here. Now that the screw is removed, underneath is a spacer needed for the SSD. Since the M.2 SSD has an 80 mm length, move the spacer to the opening marked with the 80. Now I can install the M.2 SSD. First, angle the SSD card into the slot and push it as far as it will go into the interface on the right side of the slot. Then move the SSD down towards the mounting hole. If it is done correctly, the opening on the SSD will exactly match the spacer hole. Now insert the small screw and tighten it down. The M.2 SSD is securely installed into the slot. Here is a close-up of the SSD, and you can see that it is below the max height needed by Sony. The cover will easily fit on over it with no issue. I will put the SSD cover back on and screw it in. Place the right side panel back on, put it just slightly to the right of the PS5, and then slide it to the left until you hear a and it's done. And if you happen to have the PS5 mounted vertically, don't forget to put the stand back on. Connect the power, HDMI, and network cable if you use one. Start up the PS5 and you'll see the familiar PlayStation logo. After that, you'll see a screen for the M.2 SSD storage. Choose Format M.2 SSD for the initializing of the drive and to allow it to be used by the system. It will now format the drive. The tested read speed is stated at 6554 megabytes per second versus the manufacturer stated of up to 
7100 megabytes per second. This is fine since the Sony recommended read speed is 5500 megabytes per second or faster. If you want games to automatically be installed to the M.2 or console SSD, you can make that choice in the system menu under settings, storage, installation location. I'll show that in a minute. As the PS5 starts up, you'll be brought to the main menu. On the top of the PS5 screen, select the gear icon to open the system menu. Go down the list until you see storage and press it. You will see the storage screen and it will now include the M.2 SSD storage below console storage and above USB extended storage if you have one installed. On the bottom is the installation location mentioned earlier. Now you can select where you want PS5 and PS4 games to be installed. For example, I put the current PS5 games on the console SSD and put lesser used PS5 and PS4 games on the M.2 SSD. It's all up to you. I have a USB extended storage that uses a slow 2 terabyte hard drive. I'm going to eventually move everything off of that and put it onto the M.2 drive. For my first test, I will go into the games and apps in console storage screen. I'll scroll down to the bottom of the list. I will pick a Plague Tale Innocence, and then a menu comes up to delete, move, or view game content. I will select move. That was pretty quick, less than 30 seconds to move a 34 gigabyte game from the console SSD to the M.2 SSD. Going into the M.2 SSD storage screen, you can now see the game is in there. For my second test, I will go into the games and apps in USB extended storage. I'll scroll down the list, and it's a very long list, and get to the bottom. I select Astro's Playroom. First I have to make sure it is moving to the M.2 and not the console storage. Then I press the move button. Obviously since it's stored on a slow hard drive, it took 1 minute and 40 seconds to move a 11 gigabyte game from the extended 2 terabyte hard drive to the M.2 SSD. Going into the games and apps in M.2 SSD storage shows the game has indeed moved. So that wraps up my comprehensive PlayStation 5 M.2 installation video. Any of the products mentioned in the beginning of the video will be in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you in the next video.